Rabale Kedebe Shandon Krondo Shere Dagadaba Le Rabababababababa Le Kabo Shata Broko Tolololobo Siba Ila Mande Kedehe Shonton Radabagashi de Begedebe La Brode Kalabo Sutali Gradaba Shakadeba Melandro Shade Kalabo Sundre Gedebe Sanda Bradoya Father, we bless your name, O God, tonight. Le bronto ho shaka la braga da la 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 ba shike. Male gerebe shandom brodo sheke le brada da ba 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 ba. Male karabo soto rabade kada sheke le brega de be sonto raba ba ba ba. Rebado shada braga de kalabo sundre gede be. Remanto shando skali gabade yalabam de hebo shada. Father, we bless you on tonight, O oh God. Lakababa shadabaya. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we we'll bless you for this evening. We thank you, O oh God, for what you are about to do, O oh God, by we converging in your presence. We give you all the praise and all the glory on tonight, O oh God. We we'll thank you, O oh God, because we know that you were here with us tonight. Father, we give you all the praise, adoration, dominion, thanks, even this evening, O oh God, for this is the day that you have ordained this is the day that you have prepared this is the day that you have set out oh god lord for rejoicing and gladness and our souls are excited today god we bless your name oh god we begin to thank you oh god for as many people that you ordained oh god to be here with us tonight we thank you oh god for our online community oh god we bless you oh god for everyone watching from different places connect them to this world father we thank you oh god for your grace is made available lord to us tonight in the name of Jesus, Kalebo Shababaye, Le Cabo Sadragada Yereba Shikaba, Rebade Bobo Santo Rabade Cado Shekedebe, Rebado Labro de Gedebe Shadabaya, my God. I'm excited tonight, oh God, just being in your presence tonight, oh God. I'm excited, oh God, Lord, being in this place. I'm excited, oh God, Lord, of fellowship in your presence. I'm excited, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We don't take it for granted, oh, when we have this opportunity, oh God, of being in your house. We do not take it for granted, oh God. We bless your name, oh God, for you are affording us this privilege of being here tonight. We bless your name, oh God. Lord, we bless your name, oh God. Come on, let us open our mouth this evening and begin to bless God. Let us open our mouth and begin to worship Him. Let us open our mouth and begin to give Him praise. For there is no one like unto Him. Heaven and earth adore Him and angels. They bow before him. He is the great I am. He is the mighty God. There is no one like unto him. He is the everlasting Father. Father, we bless your name because we don't need nobody to cajole us to praise you. We don't need nobody to manipulate us to praise you. We don't need nobody to stir us up to praise you. For when I think of the goodness of God and everything that he has done for me, my sanctified soul will bless his name, O God. Um my sanctified soul will bless his name, O oh God. It is not by accident. It is not by coincidence. We understand that it is not by stance. It is not by happenstance that we're still alive today. It is by your sovereign summons, O oh God. It is because you, by predestination, have set us, O oh God, to see this day. It is not because we've done everything right. It is not because we've ticked all the boxes. It is not because we've dotted all the I, not cross all the it is not because, oh God, we're falling on the right side of majesty. It is not because we've done right, not because we've exercised so well. It is not because we've eaten all the best of foods and done everything that we ought to do. But it is by your grace, it is by your mercy, God. It is because you have looked upon us with mercy, oh God. For your word makes us to understand, God, that your steadfast love never ceases, and your mercy, they never come to an end. They are new every morning oh God for great is your faithfulness ladies and gentlemen in this place and everyone watching online if I were you I will open my mouth if I have the opportunity to do that I will open my mouth and I will give God praise and I will give God glory tonight for when I think of the goodness of God my God when I think of all the things that he pulled me out of when I think that sometime last week I couldn't even look 
my mouth to speak. When I think of the fact that a week ago, I didn't even have the physical strength to stand. When I think of the fact that last week Tuesday, I didn't even have the ability to open my mouth to talk. I couldn't even open my mouth to speak. I could not even shout. I could not scream. When I think of the fact that God pulled me out of the hands of darkness, when I think of the fact that he snatched me out of the hands of infirmity, when I think of the fact that my strength is being restored, when I think of Ashakabai, when I think of the fact that his grace has been made abundant in my life, when I think of the fact that in spite of what was happening about me, his mercy was over me, when I think of the fact that in spite of everything happening about me, his grace was made sufficient. When I think of the fact that it is by his grace that I'm still here, I don't need no instrument to dance. I don't need no musicians to dance. I don't need no keyboard to praise him. I don't need no musicians to stand me up. I've got praise on my inside. I've got thanksgiving on my inside. I've got gratitude on my inside. I've got celebration on my inside. I've got glory on my inside. I've got thanksgiving. I've got testimony. For the testimony of Jesus he is the spirit of prophecy. I've got prophecy on my inside. I've got life in me. Because I live. I praise him. Because I live. I give him glory. Because I live. I celebrate him. Because I live. He's done what medical science couldn't do. He's done what biology can do. He's done what specialists couldn't do. He's bypassed the expertise of consultants to show me mercy. He has bypassed the expertise of surgeons to show me mercy. He has bypassed the expertise and the proficiency of drugs to give me grace. He has bypassed the proficiency of medicine to give me strength. Who am I that you are so mindful of me? I bless your name tonight, God. I bless your name. I give it a praise tonight. I don't wait for nobody to tell me how to praise you. My spirit is excited tonight. My soul, oh God, is glad. You have made me glad. You have given me joy. You have given me hope. In you I live, move, and have my being. God, you are great. I bless your name. I don't praise you for fancy. I don't praise you for niceties. I don't praise you for goodies. I don't praise you for lovelies. I don't praise you for beauties. I praise you, God, because you are the beauty. Lord, and never fade away. You are beautiful beyond description. I praise you for you. You are the great I am. I worship you for you. In spite of the niceties, in spite of the beauties, in spite of the goodies, in spite of the roses, in spite of the lovelies, you are still God. There is no one like you. You are a mighty king. You are the everlasting father. You are the great I am. I praise your name. Come rain or shine. Come storm scare or storm anything they call it. I praise your name. I'm still standing. I should have died. I could have died. I could have walked away. But I'm still here. Look at me. I'm still standing. If it wasn't the Lord who was on my side, I would have been swallowed up in victory. There is praise in this boy. There is praise in this soul. There is joy in this soul. My God. There is gratitude in this body. There is so much energy that comes from your grace in this body. There is thanksgiving in this body. There is 
strength from you in this body. No wonder the world makes us to understand that your strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. You are a great God. There is instrument in this body. There is sound in this body. There is glory in this body. What a mighty God you are. We are surrounded by your goodness. We are surrounded by your love. We are surrounded by your grace. We are surrounded by your mercy. When we look at every side of us, we see your mercy. When we look around us, we see your grace. When we look around us, we experience your love. When we look around us, we see your kindness. You've always been there. You are the God that never walks away. You are the one that never leaves the one behind. You are the great I am. We worship you today. Our God, we give it a praise. We give it a glory tonight. We bow before your throne. We worship your name, God. Only you deserve the worship. Only you deserve the praise. Only you deserve to be honored. Only you deserve to be adored. Only you deserve to be glorified. We love on you tonight, God. We love on you tonight. We worship you, O Majesty. Oh, we worship you, O Majesty. We worship you, O Majesty. We give it a praise, O Majesty. I bow, we bow before you. I bow, God. We bow before you. Baba, we bow before you. Papa, we bow before you. The King of Glory. That is who you are. The mighty redeemer, that is who you are. The way maker, that is who you are. The king of glory, that is who you are. You are the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels and men bow before you. You are the great I am. Nothing compared to you. Nobody compared to you. You. Nothing can match your beauty. Nothing can stand your praise. Nothing can compare to you. Nothing can measure up to you. Nobody can take your place. We boast in this thing, oh God, that nobody, nothing, no one can take your place. You are the great I am. You are the Abba Father. You are the everlasting Father. You are the great God. You are the mighty God. We bless your name tonight. Oh, come on, on yeah. We bless your name. We bless your name. You have poured your sound on the inside of us. We bless your name. We can hold this praise back. We can hold back this gratitude. We can hold back this thanksgiving. We can hold back this worship. We cannot. Even when we try to hold it back, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't hold it back. You have been good to me. You have been merciful to me. You have been kind to me. You have been loving to me, God. We bless your name, oh God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, oh God. We give you all the praise tonight, oh God. Oh, we worship you tonight. We worship you. <coughs> we worship you tonight, oh God. Oh, we will serve no foreign God, not any other treasure, God. For you are righteousness, oh God. Lord, we give it a praise tonight, oh God. You are magnificent, oh God. Oh Lord, to you we present ourselves. Lord, as a living sacrifice to you, oh God, we present ourselves. Lord, as a sacrifice, we do not just bring sacrifices to you, but we present ourselves, oh God. Lord, we are the sacrifice. We present ourselves to you, God. 
as a living sacrifice we present our bodies to you God we come tonight understanding the power of your blood we come tonight oh God acknowledging the power of the blood that cleanses we come tonight oh God Lord acknowledging the power of the blood that speaks for we come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need we come to you anyways God, we approach your throne with boldness tonight. You are our Father. We approach your throne with his understanding Lord that you will never forsake us you will never leave us we approach your throne with his understanding God we come before you God we bow before you we come to the place of the sprinkling of blood we come to Mount Zion oh the place where there are innumerable company of angels we come to this place where your presence abide we come to Mount Zion, God. We come to the place of your dwelling. We come to the place, oh God, of your habitation, God. We exalt you tonight. We come boldly, God, to the place of your invite. We come boldly, God, to the place of where you expect us to be. We come tonight, God. We approach your throne. He comes we worship you, God. We are not shying away from your grace. We cannot shy away from your mercy. We cannot shy away from your love. We embrace your love tonight. We embrace, oh God, your mercy, God. You said for us to draw nigh to you, and you are drawn in. We approach your throne. We draw nigh to you. We worship you tonight. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Tonight, oh Abba God, we come before you. Tonight, oh Abba God, we approach your throne. Tonight, oh Abba God, we bow our hearts before you. Tonight, oh Abba God, we revere you, God. Tonight, oh Abba God, we bow our hearts to you, God. Tonight, oh Abba God, we come before you. And they show Madekai, Rebota Mandeke, Rabuskalia Makotoi, Regede Beshadai, Iko Botala Bakatai, Ora de Kende Beshai, Ika Bayen de Kea, put everything together. You are still God, put everything together. You are still God, put everything aside. You are still God. Put everybody together. You are still God. Everybody walk away. You are still God. Put a thousand people together. You are still God. A thousand people walk away. You are still God. Put all the monies together. You are still God. All the money go away. You are still God. Put everything together. You are still God. Even when everything walk away, you are still God. Give everything to us, you are still God. Take everything from us, you are still God. What a mighty God you are. Lord, our worship of you is not predicated on the things you give to us. Our worship of you is not predicated on the things we receive from you. Our worship of you, Lord, is on the platform of your kingship of your lordship of your throne our worship of you is based on who you are you are a God you are a father you are the loving father you are Abba we worship you you are the great I am we are proud to be your children we are proud God to be yours we are proud to be bought by your Lord, we come before you. We bless your name, O God. I should take a push. 
We are one of the set of people, God. Lord, that will praise you in a desert. We are one of the set of people, oh God, that will praise you underneath the water. We are one of the set of people, oh God, who have made a covenant with you by sacrifice. We are one of the set of people, oh God, who are sold out to you. We are one of the set of people, oh God. You leave us alone, we will still praise you. We are one of those set of people, oh God. Do I have some of those set of people watching this broadcast online? If you are one of the set of people who have decided to worship God, come rain or shine. I want you to put something up there. I want you to make a commitment to God. I want to say something to your God. I want you to open your mouth and say something to your God that I'm one of those set of people that will praise you in spite of what happened around me. I'm one of those set of people that have decided to give you praise in spite of what happens around me. I have made a covenant with you by sacrifice. I will praise you in spite of. I will give you glory in spite of I will worship your name in spite of Oh God we bless you God we bless you God we bless you God we bless you God we, bless you God. we can't we can't walk away God Lord, <coughs> we bless you. We bless you, God. <clears throat> we bless you, King of Glory. We bless you, King of Glory. We bless you, God. <coughs> we bless you, God. We dedicate tonight to you, God. Even as we come into the rest of the night, oh God, that your presence, Lord, never go away, God. Let us enjoy and bask in the glory of this presence. Oh, we bless your name, God. We thank you that the people, oh God, in this house and the people online, oh God, will enjoy of your sweet presence, God. Open our eyes, oh God, to behold wondrous things out of your word. Lord, give us nimbleness of mind and an agility of spirit, oh God. Lord, that we will be able to in real time process what you're saying to us, oh God. Let there be no distance between us and your word, oh God. Let there be no distance between us and the communication with you, God. Let everything about us on earth respond, oh God, even as you speak in heaven. We pray tonight, oh God, that your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven, oh God. Lord, we pray tonight, oh God, that there be a synchronization, oh God, between earth and heaven. We pray tonight, oh God, that our minds are able, oh God, to translate your speakings. We pray tonight, oh God, that we are able to function in real time, oh God, even as your spirit begin to speak to us. We pray tonight, oh God, that we will not miss anything that you say. We pray tonight, oh God, that nothing will separate us from your love. We pray tonight, oh God, that even as your word begin to come forth in diverse forms, Lord, that our minds are so quick, our body is so alert, our spirit is so agile, that we are able, oh God, to grasp your word, and our mind has the ability and the faculty, God, Lord, to translate and decode that word, and to apply it, oh God, in earth, in the name of Jesus, we therefore declare, God, that nothing will stand between us and your word. We therefore declare, God, that nothing will hinder us, O oh God, from being able to get your word. We therefore declare that nothing will stand, Lord, as a hindrance between your voice and our ears. We therefore declare, God, that we are able, O oh God, Lord, to understand you. We therefore declare that we will not wait to receive all the full details before we begin to act on your word. We therefore declare that just like Abraham was able to take his son within a 
present the sacrificing that we are able, oh God, to act on your word in real time as you begin to speak. Open our ears, open our spiritual ears, open our spiritual mind, open the gates of our ears to be able to understand you. We stand tonight, oh God, even under this open heaven, we take authority over every spirit with an assignment to try to distract us and to detract us from your word, to cause a detour in our lives. We stand upon your word tonight. We come against our spirit that try to take us away from your will. Separate us from everything, God, that try to separate us from you. We declare tonight that everything that try to separate us from you, that you separate us from them. In the name of Jesus, separate us, God, from everyone that try to separate us from you. In any form, the shop, in any guise, the shop, in any clothing, the shop, in any form, the shop, in any attire, the shop, in any title, the shop. If their mission is to separate us from you, God, you separate us from them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for myself. I pray for everyone, God, in this house. I pray for the people online. I declare over their lives that every thing, every human being, every demonic agenda to separate them from you, God, that you separate them from such things and such people. In the name of Jesus, I pray tonight, Lord, that they walk in sync with your word. Shaka boy, ire be shoto, ade kere be sha. Oh, we bless you. I feel the presence of God. We bind it tonight, yes. We bind it tonight. Everything with an attempt, everything in disguise, every voice of the enemy in disguise, in the form of spirituality, every plans of Satan in disguise, in the form of Christianity, every force of Satan in disguise, in the form of prophecy, every voice of Satan in disguise that come in the form of suits say him, every voice of Satan in disguise that come to pronounce and to project and to declare things over us with an intention, God, to take our attention away from you. We declare tonight under this open heaven, under the auspices of this open heaven, we declare, oh God, it will not come to pass. I was right now, I stand in the gap, oh God, for your children tonight, let it be shy. I begin to declare tonight um, that every plan of the enemy, um, every strategy from hell, um, every assignment from darkness um, with an intention, God, um, to separate your children from you. Uh, Lord, through enemies, guys, or disguise, uh, we declare tonight um, it will not come to pass uh, that every confraternity, uh, that every conniving, uh, that every colluding uh, from hell uh, with an intention, God, um, to pull your children away from your will. We declare tonight it will not come to pass. We come by the speaking of the blood of Jesus. We declare tonight we break the stronghold of the enemy of God. We take authority tonight. We exercise our authority. We declare tonight your word says what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. I stand tonight under this open heaven. We bind tonight Every walkings of darkness, we bind them tonight. We declare, God, they will not have hands to carry out the enterprise. We frustrate their devices. We bring their counsel to naught. Oh, shake it. Oh, I feel a strong warfare tonight. I feel a strong warfare tonight. I feel that spirit of intercession tonight. I feel that spirit of intercession tonight. Ah, shakabai. I feel that spirit of intercession. I feel in my spirit tonight that there are people who the enemy is on assignment in your life. I don't know if you're in this house or you're watching online. 
But I feel tonight, I'll speak to the camera. I feel tonight that there are people with enemies on assignment in your life. His intention is to disguise himself. His intention is to guise. His intention is to cover up himself and come between you and what God is saying in your life. In this strategic season of your life, in this very important season of your life, the enemy is on an assignment. The enemy is on a very strategic assignment with an intention to pull you away from what God is saying to you. His intention is to pull you away from the thoughts say of the Lord. He's come through manipulations. He's come through schemes. He's come through all the different strategies to try to do that. He has come disguising himself like an angel of light. He has come with an attempt, showing up like prophecy, but still saying he's come through craftiness to try to pull you away from what God is saying to you because he understands that when you begin to walk in the now world and in the thoughts of the Lord, the enemy understands that when you begin to walk in obedience to what God is saying to you, that is what defines who you are and allows you to fulfill purpose. The enemy understands that. He doesn't want you to do that. He did the same thing to Jesus. He came and quoted scriptures to Jesus in the wilderness. He said, command the stones to be bread. He understands that Jesus has the ability to command stones to bread. He understands that Jesus has the power to jump down and not be hurt. But that is not a problem. His intention is to disconnect Jesus from what God's plan is for his life. But I stand tonight. I stand in the gap for you. We declare for you tonight that every plan of the enemy to want in the separate you from what God has assigned for you, from what God has spoken of for you, it will not come to pass. We scatter it tonight. We break the stronghold of Satan over your life. We plead the blood of Jesus over you. We declare tonight you will fulfill purpose. You will walk at the real time of God. You will walk in the, in the, the present word that God is saying over your life. I shake you I don't know tonight, I thought I was going to teach a little bit, but I believe there was a strong spirit of intercession in this house tonight. I believe strongly that the enemy's assignment to try to want to pull you away from God will not come to pass. We stand in the gap for you tonight. We stand in the gap. We contend for your faith. Whatever way the enemy has presented himself to try to take you away from what God is saying, we stand in the gap for you. We declare over your life that it will not come to pass. We declare this night speaking the blood. We declare over you tonight your focus will not shift from God, but rather your mind will stay on him. We declare tonight, I even begin to pray for your mind, that your mind becomes so agile and nimble, that you are able to understand what God is saying. Even the unspoken word of God, even the word of God that comes through signs, even the word of God that comes through dreams, even the word of God that comes through visions, even the word of God that comes through, come through open visions, I begin to pray that your mind is so equipped. I pray tonight that God give you the ability that you begin to understand what God is saying. That there will not be lapses. There will not be gaps. Yes, yes, yes. That there will not be gaps between you and what God is saying. I pray for you that there will not be gaps between you and what God is saying. I pray for you that there will not not be gaps between you and what God is saying. May I pray tonight that even as the word of God comes, you are so quick to respond. That even as the word of God comes, you are so quick to understand. That even as the word of God comes, you are so quick to interpret. Even as the word of God comes, you are so quick to decode. Even as the word of God comes, you are so quick to decipher. Even as the word of God comes,
words. You are so quick to unpack that word. Not just to unpack it, but you are so quick to act upon the word. I pray for you that every spirit of procrastination, every spirit of delay that has caused you to stay in one place for too long, cast you to stay in one location for too long, hinder your progress. Every spirit of the enemy that came through that form, I break it tonight. I pray for you that you will begin to act, that God give you hinds feet. You have the feet of a deer. I pray for you that the speed of God come over you to us. That the speed of God of Ashodabakoya come over you like never before. That you will hear God's word and you will act upon the word simultaneously. That you are connected to heaven. That your heavens are open. That you are not waiting. There are no gaps. But as the word comes from God, you are acting upon the word and you're seeing results. I break fear for God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind in the name of Jesus I showed all the book I can it Rabbi Deshak Urakatai my God who is this word for who is this word for who is this word for someone has been crying to God someone has been crying to God You've been crying, telling God, I'm tired. I'm tired of this place. I'm tired of staying in one place, my God. You've been crying to God, my God. I was meant to teach tonight, but there is someone who has been crying to God. You've been touching heaven. You've been telling God, I'm tired. I'm tired of staying in this place. I've been here too long. I've seen everything walk past me. I've been close to it. I never got it. I've been close to it. I never held it. I almost got it. I never got it. I heard you speak. Speak it. I almost got it, but before that I jumped in, everything is gone. You are like that man who stood by the poolside when Jesus asked him. He said, I have always been there that the water gets stirred up. But before I would jump in, another has gone in. You are like that individual. There has been a delay, Shakaya. There has been a delay in your life. Every time you're close to it, someone steps in. You always want my away. You're always one minute away. You're always one hour away. You're always one month away. You're always one year away. They told you that if you had come just one year ago, you could have got it. They told you if you just called a two one honors, you could have got it. They told you if you had applied one week before, you could have got it. And you know in your spirit that God showed you that Walk. God showed you that word, but there's been a delay. There's been gaps between you and what God is saying. There has been gaps. God never delays. God never slacks. God is never weak. God is never late. God speaks. You receive the word, but there was gaps because you didn't act upon the word. But tonight, every spirit of the enemy that is on assignment that causes you to procrastinate, to delay as a result of fear tonight we break it break it in the name of Jesus it is broken tonight did the Bible not say that God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind tonight we declare over you the sound mind become operational in your life that power become functional in your life that glory become manifest in your life love Become predominant in your being in the name of Jesus. I shake it. I feel fire tonight. I feel fire, my God. The enemy thought he had me. But I feel fire tonight. I feel something breaking. I shock. I feel something breaking tonight. The enemy thought he had you. I feel something breaking. I feel strength all over me. I shake the book. The enemy thought he had me. I even stand in the gap. At this point in time, every spirit of infirmity that has come over my people, every spirit of infirmity that tried to hold you down, every spirit of sickness, every flu, every virus, 
from hell that try to knock you down, try to cause delay in your life, and cause setback. Under this open heaven, we send the word of God. We declare for you tonight that a virus is broken. The end of that virus, the effect of that virus, the spirit behind the virus. God never sent a virus to you. The devil is a liar. We plead the blood of Jesus over you. I declare right now, Shakaya. I declare right now, even in itself, somehow, that your body begin to receive healing and quickly in the name of Jesus. I command tonight that every infirmity on the inside of you command them to dry up in the name of Jesus. We'll speak over your body. We'll speak over your body. We'll speak over your cells. We'll speak over your veins. We'll speak over your lungs. We'll speak over your blood vessels. We declare health restored in the name of Jesus. For by his stripes you were healed. We declare that over you tonight. In the name of Jesus. My God, my God, how devil is alive. You will act on God's word. You will become everything that God has destined for you to become. Mm. God will bless you. God will bless you. We bless your name, God, tonight. We bless your name, God, on here tonight. We bless your name, oh God, on here tonight. And oh, shake it, eba, tie. Malikado, shaka, bon, tali, eba. Kira, ba, 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 shake it. Woo! Mm, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, you all, praise God, praise God, praise God. Woo, I feel the presence of God strong in this place like never before, like never before, like never before. Something is breaking tonight. Something is happening tonight. Oh my God, gaps are being closed. Close the gaps. I keep hearing that in my spirit that gaps have been closed. Gaps have been closed. Gaps have been closed, my God. Gaps have been closed. Close the gap. I keep hearing in my spirit that gaps have been closed. Every gap that has stood between you and the manifestation of what God has spoken over your life, that the gaps have been closed. Oh, Shia, I begin to even speak over your life that every wound, every illness that you've heard, that as, as a result has expanded and is struggling to be healed, even as your skin has struggled to be healed, to close up. Yes, that is the word. Everything, every wound in the realms of the spirit or physically that has refused to close up. I hear in my spirit tonight that gaps are being closed in the name of Jesus. That what should have taken one year for you to come to full healing. What could have taken one year for you to come to full recovery. What could have taken one year, six months, for you to come to full restoration. We declare tonight at Abakoshire that gaps have been closed. What could have taken you three years to pay up your debt? We declare tonight that somebody better get in there right now. Gaps have been closed. I declare tonight the bankers told you it'll take you 18 months before you are able to buy a property. But the Bible says tonight he will he will he will cause other 
process in righteousness in a year in my spirit that gaps are being closed God is expediting things God is sending facilitators to you what could have elongated the process what could have taken longer gaps are being closed gaps are being closed as soon as Zion traveled she brought for the male child gaps have been closed tonight oh my god we're pressing into god somebody's pressing into god i was going to teach tonight but this is too strong this is just too strong on here tonight this is just too strong gaps have been closed if i were you in this house or watching online i'll begin to declare for my life begin to declare for my family I begin to take over my finances, over my faith, over my marriage, my mind, that gaps have been closed, that what could have taken you 12 months before you get to that destination, God said, I'm closing gaps, every lapses, every gaps, every delay, everything that should have made a process long. He said, I'm closing the gaps. He can't be I'm easing the traffic. What could have taken a long the time to achieve. He said, I'm closing the gaps tonight. We stand in a gap, oh God. I don't know what this word is for, but we stand in a gap for that family, oh God. What could have taken that family a longer time to achieve? We pray for you tonight that the gaps have been closed tonight in the name of Jesus. You will go back to that same place. You will receive a different report. They will look at you, investigate you. They will carry out under the prognosis um, and they will discover that the gaps um, have closed up. Um, the tumor has shrunk. Um, gaps have been closed. Um, tumors are shrinking. Um, gaps have been closed. Um, cancers are fading away. Um, gaps have been closed. Um, leukemia is fading away. Um, gaps have been closed. Um, infirmity is drying up. Um, gaps have been closed. Um, tumors are shrinking. Gaps have been closed. Um, cancers are fading away. Gaps have been closed tonight by the speaking of the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we declare tonight that gaps have been closed. In the name of Jesus. Gaps have been closed. Oh my God, this is heavy. This is heavy. This is heavy. This is heavy. Haragashaya. Ye can shoko daba brutali kataske de basho. Oh my god, we bless your name tonight. We bless your name. Come on, come on. We bless your name tonight, oh God. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We bless your name for the gaps that have been closed. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My God, my God. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, we bless you. Oh, we bless you on, the, on this night. Oh, God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor and adoration. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You've been blessed tonight. Amen. I just see a little bit of what God put on my heart to share with us tonight. And that we can close and go. I feel... That the work's been done tonight. I understand when God moves and his work's been done. I quickly acknowledge it. And then flow by it. But tonight I just want to put an insight on certain words. That we know so well. My God. Am I able to touch this tonight? I don't know if I'm able to touch this tonight. I don't know. If I'm able to touch this tonight. I don't know if I'm able to touch this tonight, God. Oh, Jesus, Spirit of God. Spirit of God, we, we love on you. Holy Spirit, we love on you. We love on you, the sweet Spirit of God. We love on you tonight. We love on you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we love on you. We love on you, just sweet. We love on you. We embrace your presence. We love on you. We love on you. Oh, 
Oh, we love on you. We love on you, God. We love on you, God. We love on you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly, I just want us to um, look at a few things and then we can close and go. I just thought I'd drop one or two words even though we pray. This part is strategies, prayer, and action. It doesn't matter how, um, what form or what um, order it comes during the meeting, but there's always strategies, prayer, and action. That is what Spire is about. God has made us to understand that a lot of times when he speaks, he gives us promises which are guaranteed and he gives us the strategies to accomplishing those promises, get <coughs> those promises, which is human dependent. It's got our human effort involved in it. And that we can see it come to pass. We can take action. That is where action comes into be. So this is what Spire is about for us. Many of you who have never been to a spa meeting, our spa meeting is very strategic. We got prayer in it, we got um, strategies, we got action. So I try to and therefore to chip in one or two words before we close for the day. I was looking at what God has said to me a couple of weeks, I believe months ago, and it amazed me, and that is what I want to share if I have the time. And um, he started by saying that broke is easy. Broke is easy. Poverty is easy. Pulling down is easy. It is very easy to pull down anything or anyone. It is very easy. You just need to put out a word out there. Just destroy, assassinate people's character, which a lot of people are doing ugly, but people are doing it. Destroying is easy. Failure is very easy. So, but you know what is not easy? Building is not easy. It requires a good work. It, it requires a, a good amount of work. Success is not easy. It requires work. Prosperity is work. Blessing is work. Now, the pronouncement of a blessing can be easy. The pronouncement of a blessing, in many cases, is very easy. But the actualization of that blessing requires human intervention. So it is very easy for me to say a word over you. But many times the actualization of that word requires human intervention. Give you an example. God has spoken to us tonight whilst we're praying. Now there were declarations that went out. God is closing the gaps and a lot of that. Those words have been spoken over you. But in many cases the actualization of that word demands and requires you to get into action. That is why this is spa, strategy, prayer, action. It requires you to get into action, to do something. So because if you were a student, like I say to the children in the church, the students in the church, the young people, if you're a student studying for your exam, your finals, and the word of the Lord came out of my mouth and said to you that you would graduate with first class honors, the best in the class, the best in the year. And if you close your books because of what the Lord has come over you and decide not to study, you have just undone everything that you have been doing. You are actually going against the word of the Lord. You are not walking in line. You're going contrary to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord that came to you, prophesying over you that you will come out of first class honor, shows you the end. It gives you an idea of what you have the ability to achieve, of what you have the potential to become, to achieve. It is not in any way suggesting to you that you stop everything that you have put effort in doing because God has spoken the word over you. It means you don't have to do nothing. You just have to stay back and watch it come to pass. Don't walk that way. It doesn't work that way. So because that is the reason why a lot of us are still where we are today because words have been spoken over us. People have prophesied over us. Words have been declared over us by profound preachers, by profound prophets, by prophets whose words come to pass. But if you don't do something about it, you might say, and I'll give you an example. Isaiah and Ezekiah. Isaiah was told by God to go and tell Ezekiah that, look, you got to die. The man is already sick and 
and let the word come unto you. Look, I don't, it's like Isaiah going to say, look, I don't want to make matter worse. Look, I'm, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. But you know what? It's not my fault. God's had to tell you to put your hands together, you will die. Now, most of us would have just packed our bags, written our wheels, got our family together, bless the children, and say, God has spoken, so let it be. But Hezekiah turned and faced the wall and began pointing things out to God and said, did I not do this? Did I not do that? And God sent Isaiah back. He said, go tell him. I'm adding 15 more years to his years. He had to go back to God and cry to God and pointed out things that he has done to God. And his life was extended. His life was extended. So when the word of the Lord comes to you, it's not a time for you not to do nothing. It's not a time for you not to do nothing. All right, let me go ahead quickly. Like I said, the pronouncement of that blessing in many cases requires human intervention. And this is where many fall short. That point where we have to work out our salvation is where a lot of us fall short. Productivity is not easy. Productivity requires work. The word productivity is very interesting, what lovely, what we like it. But it requires a huge amount of work. Faith is work. Faith without works, we understand, is dead. Faith is work. Have you heard this statement that we all know very well in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8? I have given you the land to possess it. Now this verse, a lot of us like it. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, for the sake of time, I'll read quickly. Behold, I have set the land before you, God speaking to Joshua and the Israelites. Behold, I have set, I like the word set, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. Now, I like the, the first part, it just stopped. It said, Behold, I have set the land before you. Then it now said, Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give unto them and to their seed after them. Now look, do you, do you realize that if this Bible verse had stopped just on the first part of the sentence, a lot of us would have been happy because that did not demand any work from us. He said, Behold, I have set before you the land. That did not demand any work. It doesn't require us to do anything. I would have rejoiced. You would have been glad. We would have thrown in an offering. We would have done some spiritual charismatic dance. We would have somersaulted, celebrated, danced around and screamed because God said he has set the land before us. We don't need to do anything. Thing. We don't need to work. We don't need to plow. We don't need to invest. We don't need to read. We don't need to study. We don't need to cultivate. If God has set the land before us, then everything is done. No. No. But God knows that if he had stopped there, he would have raised a generation of lazy people. He would have raised a generation of people who would not want to do anything. Unfortunately, such generation is in today's church because a lot of us have had prophecies over us and we understand and we believe that as long as the word of the Lord has come upon us, we don't have to do nothing. We just have to sit back, relax, fasten our seatbelt, pull up our tent pegs, stretch ourselves because something is about to happen. For what is about to happen will happen. I don't have to do anything. Can't surround, surround, but the devil is a liar. God understood that. And then he continued and said, and he said, go in and possess the land. That demand human innovation. That requires something of us. That is where a lot of us fall short. We are quick in receiving the promise. We are quick in responding to the first part of it that says, I have set the land before you. But we are not very quick in the go in and possess it. We are so quick in I have given you all manner of blessing. But we are not responding to the other part that said you have to go in and possess it. Because the going in and possessing what God has given to you requires you to apply yourself. Requires you 
to apply to apply yourself it requires you to do something church people don't like that it requires you now i like words and the word said in the book of deuteronomy 1 verse 8 give you an a little bit of insight to what god was talking about the word set in the dictionary means this if you set something somewhere, you put it there, especially in a careful or deliberate way. Something that has been set has been prepared. So what God is saying is, he said, I have prepared this land for you. He said, I have deliberately, consciously, I have intentionally. Your inability to walk in what God has set for you limits you from enjoying it. It hinders you from enjoying it, from getting it. God didn't demand for us to prepare what he has already given us. He didn't demand from us to manufacture it. He didn't demand for us even to create it. He instructed us rather to possess it, to go get it. This suggests to me that it is already made available. God is not saying, I'll try to make it available when you move. He said, no, it is already set. Something that is set has been prepared. It's been made ready. It's been kept as like preparing a dish for you. You don't have to go cook it. They've already prepared a table for you. You don't have to go and source for the ingredients and all the different things to, to make the meal. It is already set. Your responsibility is to show up, to go there and get it. And that is where a lot of people fall short. So whether we get it or not, it's not dependent on God, but us. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8 in the New International Version, it says, See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land. The Lord swore he would give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to their descendants after them. Now the word sent is the word given in New International Version. And the word given means to present voluntarily and without compensation. You did not have to do anything for God to give you this land. You did not have to bribe him for him to make it available for you. You did not have to do anything for God to make it set for you. He gave it as a result of your generational blessing. It means to bestow as a gift which means you didn't have to work for it, to confer and to favor. It has been given. Your responsibility is to go and take it. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? See, Deuteronomy 1, 8 would have been nice. It would have been fancy and perhaps easy if it had just stopped in the verse, in the first line. But no, it went further. To demand our involvement. It demands our involvement. It demands you and I to do something. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9 and I'll close because of time. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9 says, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your cattle and in the fruit of your ground for the lord will again take delight and prosper in you as he took delight in your fathers now i like the fact that he said at the end the lord will take delight and prosper in you as he took delight in your fathers but make no mistake the beginning part says the lord god will make you abundantly prosperous in what in all the work of your hand. How would God make you abundantly prosperous if there is no work in your hand? He said, in the fruit of your womb, if fruit only comes when something has been planted, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground, you can't lay claim on any fruit if you have not put a seed on the ground. You can't lay claim on any fruit. I don't care how long you pray, how much you pray. You can't lay claim. Now, lay claim on fruits without seed in the ground is like me walking 
to HSBC Investment Bank at the end of the month in February and say, I've come to take my wages because the Lord said so. I've come to take because the camels upon a thousand hills belong to the Lord. Oh my God. I bet you we'll be putting monies together to bail you out of jail. So because they know that either you are coming to steal or you've lost your mind. But if you work, you have every right to walk in there and say, look, it's the end of the month. There's nothing reflected on my bank account. You have the right to do that. Why? Because there's work in your hand. You've put seed in the ground. The laborer is worthy of his wages. What are you waiting for? I gotta close now. I don't want to take too much of your time, but I gotta close now. Are you putting seed in the ground? Or are you just waiting for fruit to show up? If you plant nothing, is the only one that plants, as a matter of fact, everyone plants. Everyone plants. Everybody plants. Some people plant fruit, seed rather, some plant nothing. So, but the thing is, everyone plants and everyone's got to be harvesting something when it's time to harvest. The people that plant seed will harvest fruit. The people that plant nothing will harvest also, but they will harvest nothing. They have nothing to show for it because there was nothing to put in the ground. So when, when, when everybody's coming to plant, when it's the planting season and you decide to eat what you should be planting, when you decide to take what should be the Lord's, when you decide not to invest your time, when all the people are investing their time, giving their time, dedicating themselves to God, when all the other young women are abstaining, keeping themselves away from every immorality, setting themselves ready for what God has destined for them, when every young man is preparing himself for marriage for the future and setting himself, praying, trusting God, serving God, and you decide to flounder around them, and to go from place to place from one person to another person. And you think that you will do that and just walk into a place successfully and live a happily married life and enjoy life. It don't work that way. What do you sow, you will reap. It's a planting season. I know you don't want to hear this, but that is the truth. If you don't invest, the Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. It's not just talking about offering. Give is synonymous to invest. If you invest, it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Press down, run it over, shake it again, run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom? So God said, I've given you the land, Deuteronomy 1 8, to possess it. It is already given. I've made it available. I've prepared it. I've deliberately, intentionally prepared it, set it out for you. You have a responsibility to go get it. You have to invest. You have to map out strategies. That is why we're in spam. Spam is strategies, prayer, action. You have to think of the strategies. How do I get everything that God has destined for me? All the ideas God has given me, how do I put them to work? All the ideas God has given me, the creative genius, the witty invention that God has given me, the creativity and the skill and the expertise. How do I put them in action? How do I create a venue for God to pour into me? How do I I create reservoir for God to pour everything that he has destined for me here. How do I create something that God will fill up? Um, listen to me. If God has promised you millions um, and you don't have a bank account, where is God going to put it anyway? You don't, you don't show that you have capacity for what God has promised you. Some of you need to go and register a, a company. Some of you need to hire accountants. You need to merge. You need to, you need to go and learn business. You need to go and learn from somebody. You need to go and walk. Some of you need to go and literally apply and get a job. Some of you need to go and serve. You need to go apprenticeship. Some of us need to go back to school. It is not just shanda, shanda, prophesying and, and dancing and all that is no honor. Some of us need to go and study again. Some of us need to go back to school. 
soul. I know you can prophesy. I know you can pray. I know you can preach. I know you can dance at the spiritual dances, but you still need to go back to school. You need to go apprenticeship. You need to go and understudy someone. You need to go and serve. You need to get a nine to five. You need to show up in the morning. Someone needs to teach you structure, administration. You need to be accountable. You need to be responsible. Those are ways of preparing yourself in receiving everything that God has destined for you. It is not just in the giving of offering. I'm sorry to say that. It is not just in the giving of offering and then you go back home and do nothing. You need to, when you give your offering, you need to then create an avenue for God to give back to you. Even if you don't know how to manage your resources, there are hedge fund managers, there are financial advisors, there are people who have expertise in those areas. You need to consult with them. You need to speak to them. You need to buy their mind. You need to pay and get their time, pay an hour consultation. You need to understand things you don't know. You need to give your business for people who have expertise to manage. You need to meet people who can leverage, who can scale your business. You need to engage with them. Them. That is a way for you to take what God has given to you. That is a way for you to create capacity and receive everything that God has given to you. Some of us can't get everything that God has already prepared for us because we don't, we, we've not created capacity. We've not created opening. There is no reservoir. There is no space for it. Every day you're crying to God and saying, God, pour into me. And God is crying back and saying, I keep wanting to pour into you. But there is nothing available for me to pour into. There is no business, there is no job, there is nothing that you've made available. Where do I pour in all these resources? That is why the Bible says here, even though everything belongs to him, he will still be put under servants, masters, until he comes of age. God is looking at you and saying, look, you are crying all this cry and pointing things, everything that you need, but you are not ready yet. You are not of age. You're not matured yet. Your age is advancing, but your maturity is diminishing. You've not grown. You're growing in age, in years, in numbers, but your maturity, your mind, and your spirit is diminishing. You have not learned how to create space. You see, that is why abundance is not predicated on your age. 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 21-year-olds have understood the skill, the art of wealth creation. And God would not say because they are 22, 16, 15-year-old, I would not point at them. No, the principle remains. The principle is irrespective of your age. The, the principle does not apply to how young old you are. When the principle is in motion, when the principle is applied, it doesn't matter who applies that principle. As long as the principle is in line with what God has ordained, there's a blessing that comes from it. There is a manifestation that comes from it. God would not say because you're 70 and you withhold, I will give you because you're 70 and withhold. And the boy that is 15 who is liberal and is given, I will not give to him because he's 15. The devil is a liar. The Bible says, Liberal souls have been made fat. He that withhold that shall amount to nothing. So it's not, it's not only talking about offering. The ideas God has given you, why are you withholding them? Why are you keeping them back? Why are you procrastinating? The strategies that God has given you, with invention, everything you touch turns to gold. Everywhere you go, people want to talk to you. Every post you put online, it goes viral. People are earning from it. What are you waiting for? You bake cake, everybody like it, and yet you're complaining of money. You cook a meal, everybody gets excited, they want to eat it, and yet you're complaining of financial breakthrough. God is saying, what else do you want me to do? I've given you the skills. I've given you these ideas. That is the way for you to take the land that I've given to you. What are you waiting for? Go in and possess the land that the Lord has given you. I'm closing. I'm closing. I wanted to share this broadcast. Somebody needs to hear this. The prayer and this teaching. Somebody's life needs to be transformed by this word. 
Somebody's life needs to be transformed. And look, if this word has blessed you, I'm closing now. If this word has blessed you, send us a message. I'd like to hear back from you. And if you're watching this broadcast right now and you say, look, I understand all these things you're saying, but I need help. Send me your message. He said, I need help. I need to understand that there are certain things I don't understand. I pray, but I don't understand when it comes to money, business, strategies. I don't understand it. Send me a message. This is part of the gospel. If you say, look, I need help. I've done everything, but I need someone to pray with me. Send me a message. Let's pray with you. You are not left alone. It's a kingdom work. We are part of the kingdom. We are part of one kingdom. Let us join forces together. If you need help in prayer, send us a message. If you need help in strategies, in organizing, administering, consulting, training, expertise, you need ideas. Some of you have ideas. You don't know how to channel it. Send us a message. If we don't have it, we will link you up with the people who have expertise in that area. The kingdom is not lacking. We've got everything in the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about the church. That is the mistake we make. I'm not speaking about household of mercy. I'm not saying household of mercy. I'm talking about the kingdom of God, which means the church universal is not lacking. If I don't have it, I gotta know someone who's got expertise in that area. If I'm a gynecologist, I gotta know a pediatrician. If I'm a pediatrician, I've gotta know a surgeon in a different area. The kingdom is not lacking. If I don't know how to negotiate, but I know how to organize, I, I will know someone to negotiate. Is that not what God did with Moses and Aaron? He said, your brother shall speak for you. You shall be God. You shall be like God to him. Witness, whatever thing you want to say, he will say it. Oh, God. He has the ability to speak. You have the link with me. You guys will work together. It's going to be a synergy, a merger between you and him to bring the past, everything that I want to do in Egypt. Oh, God. Come on, man. Some of us can talk. Some of us can think. Some of us can train. Come on. Let's come together. I've got to close now. God bless you, God bless you. Look, next Tuesday, we'll continue our spa. But like I said, send a message. Let's connect with you and pray with you. I gotta leave you, I'm your brother. Look, got a lot of exciting things coming on the seventh. One of the daughters in our church is having minister's feast, um, Victoria. It's gonna be an exciting time in God's presence. Check her page, give there to save. You'll see all the instructions there. If you're a minister, you're a worship leader, a minister in any form in church, it doesn't matter what you do, come to that meeting. It's going to be an exciting time. The last two she's had has been wonderful. And the interesting thing is free of charge. So you do not want to miss. Then on the 24th and the 25th of April, my wife is having a conference called Renaissance. It's going to be amazing. Prophet Zion Matthews, all the way from South Africa, is going to be there. My wonderful, beautiful sister, Jacqueline Denise, and her husband. Oh, my God, I can't wait. All the way from Canada, we'll be here. My friend and brother, Emmanuel Apiafi, will be here. Kylie Wokolo, wonderful, great worship leader with a big heart for God, will be there also. And my humble self will be there. My wife, Elizabeth, is the host. Look, you've got to be here. You're going to be here. It's going to be happening here in Enfield. It's going to be all the details are coming up in a couple of days. But 24th and 25th of April, you do not want to miss it. It's going to be a mighty move of God. And another thing is the prayer school. The school of prayer has been open. Registration open today. So go online and register for the school of prayer. We will teach on prayer. We will activate prayer. God said, go and raise up a generation of interfaces and intercessors. I'm not the only tutor um, in the school of prayer. There are other renowned, um, sound, seasoned teachers that will be bringing um, lectures. It's a 20 class, 20 session, 20 lecture school running from the 2nd of March to the 8th of May. It's going to be two classes a week and then we'll give you all the schedule the itinerary, the curriculum. It's going to be an exciting time in God's presence and then we can go on there. A lot of people want to know how to pray, understand prayer. You know, a lot of people want to pray differently. A lot of people want to understand the power they have in prayer. It's going to be an amazing time. And look, join us on Sunday at the household of mercy. My wife will continue her teaching on the believer's authority. 
It was an amazing time we had last Sunday. I can't wait. I cannot wait to sit down again this Sunday and hear this great woman speak God's word with boldness, fearless, and with faith. All right, now, we got to go. God bless you. If you, um, and we'll finish, we'll take our offerings. If you want to give, you know, to um, what we are doing, you can send a message. We'll send it a link privately, and then you can give into this work. But God bless you. Have a wonderful day. God said, I've set the land before you. Now you go in and possess it. Remember, when we prayed, God said to us, that he's closing the gap. It's closing the gap. All right then. God bless you. Bye for now. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. Salute. Mm -hmm.